schools in Nigeria have been shut for months, but now the government has decided on a partial reopening of schools. The question is, with government's reactions to important and also urgent issues, what are the con concrete measures that are being put in place to keep students, teachers, invigilators safe amid the rising cases of COVID-19 in the country, as any misstep could prove counterproductive and disastrous? Well, many stakeholders are, however, worried that public and private schools are far from being prepared for reopening for exams to hold. Commissioner of Higher Education in Delta States, Professor Patrick Moore-Bogare, joins us now for more on this topic. Professor, many thanks for joining us on Newsday this afternoon to discuss this in more detail. I mean, when it comes to this topic of schools reopening, there just seem to be more questions than answers. So my first question to you is, what capacity does Delta State currently have to test, trace and isolate in the event of an outbreak, with the reopening of schools, that is? Well, there are, there are certain protocols that have been uh, put in place by the NCDC, and uh, Delta State is at the forefront of implementing those protocols. Uh, specifically for the tertiary institutions, the polytechnics, the colleges of education, and the, and the university, I would say we are getting close to resumption. We are on our way. We've gone very far in getting those protocols implemented. And uh, once, once we do our final inspection of the institutions and we are satisfied, we will give a date for resumption. But for the, for the secondary schools, uh, I'm very proud to say that uh, Delta State has, has fulfilled what is required for the secondary schools to resume, first for the, for the SS3 students and then the JS3 students. All right. Um, there are talks yeah. about periodic testing for not just the students, but for also teachers, especially those in teachers. secondary schools, not even the tertiary institutions, because they can easily understand the SEDC's uh, protocol and maybe adhere to it. But for those in the secondary school, how often would they be tested? Uh, that would be on a daily basis because... Uh, because uh, as they, some, you know, some of them are, are day students, some are boarders. So necessarily after school, the day students will go back home. And as they come back to school, of course, they must be tested. And if they show signs of the COVID, they will be asked to go home. There are isolation centers in Delta State. Where within, the sec within the schools, there are places they can be kept while we await actions for, from the Ministry of Health. Do not forget that. This is strictly a health matter. Whoever, whoever is standing in is just being, filling it a little gap pending when the health officials come. So we've been taught basic things to look out for as non-health officials. And once we identify those things, we place a call across to health officials who are everywhere in Delta State. They are in every local government on standby. Okay, but does the state, are you saying that the state definitely has the capacity to ensure that students coming in and teachers are tested on a daily basis? Because that is very important with the amount of asymptomatic carriers Certainly. that we're seeing, Professor. But to add to that as well, one thing that has to be key, and scientists continue to hammer on about this, is proper ventilation in classrooms. You said that the Delta State government has met all protocol requirements. So are you saying that all of that has also been looked at and it has been achieved? Definitely. Spacing, ventilation, uh, whatever is required has been done as far as our secondary schools are concerned. I can beat my chest on that. For the past few weeks, my colleague in the Basic and Secondary Education Ministry has been on the field, has hardly been in Asaba, has been on the field, ensuring that everything is put in place for children to come back to school. I'm very definite about that. All right, which is quite... Good to know, and it's good to hear that there's massive commitment for this. At the moment, um, for those, is there any program in place? Because certainly some of the students have actually lost time. How do you make up, or how is the state going to make up for all the lost times for some of the students? Well, fortunately, in Delta State, the children were not completely idle at home. They were not completely idle at home. Uh, there was a lot of teaching going on online. 
there was a lot of teaching going on online, both at the basic and secondary education level and the tertiary education level. And for those who are, who are coming in for external examinations, like the SS3 students, it's just minor revision they have to do because they have been kept abreast with the curriculum, with their scheme of work, while they were at home. So it's not a complete loss at all. I know there are challenges in this regard. Sometimes some, one or two persons may not be able to log in and all of that. Of course, uh, we are a developing uh, country. But Delta State did not keep its children idle. Lockdown. Certainly not. And I must commend the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, and particularly the teachers. Our primary and secondary school teachers have been fantastic in Delta State. A lot of sacrifice from them, which we appreciate. Certainly. And um, speaking of the teachers, actually, I had two questions for you, Professor. The first I was going to ask was, what happens in the event of a silent super spreader in a school? But what I wanted to ask with regards to teachers is, um, we know that over the past few months, several teachers have not received their pay. And Governor Okoa is one governor that has been criticized for his plan to retrench workers and slash salaries. What is the situation now? There is no secondary school teacher who has not received a salary up to July ending. Absolutely none. Absolutely none. Delta State pays salary. Salaries in Delta State are put on first charge. So whatever, whatever income that Delta State has, the first expenditure is on salary of workers. No worker in Delta State is good salary. No uh, the worker in Delta State is good salary. And, yeah, to the second part of that yeah, question, of that question. Mm -hmm. with what happens in the event of a super spreader, mm. a silent super spreader in a school, because this also kind of goes back to my first question about the ability to really test, trace and isolate. What happens in that event? If there is a spread of the COVID? A silent super spreader in the school, an asymptomatic carrier that has passed it around to fellow classmates, to teachers, and it's unknown. What happens in that event? It is for this reason that there are constant checks. There will be constant checks in the schools. Of course, in the larger society, it happens. Going back to school, actually, worldwide is a risk. Going back to school is a risk. We are trying to manage the situation. Should a generation of our, of, of our population lose education, or should they stay at home while we take care of the health situation, we are believing that as the cases resume, that we must put more mechanisms in place to ensure to ensure that children go back to school. It's, it's a very dicey, a very dicey decision to take. And government has to go in for, okay, let us spend more money. Let's put facilities in place. Let's put materials in place and let the children come in while we are watching. I know that even the adult population is a bit undisciplined when it comes to even the wearing of, of masks. But you know, it is easier to even control these children in school, ensuring that they put on their masks. So we cannot say children should stay at home until we have zero case. No, we cannot. And of course, uh, even a medical doctor cannot tell you for sure that this person, this asymptomatic person has it or doesn't have it. But we've been taught what to do. Security men have been taught what to do. Teachers have been taught what to do. Practices have gone on. There have been trials. And it has been fantastic. You need to get to our schools that are resuming. Uh, I'm even shocked. I'm shocked that we got this far. I didn't know we would go this far. Uh, in preparation for, for resumption. I want to say many thanks to you there, talking about the Commissioner of Education in Delta State, Professor Patrick Mogobul Hare, as he joined us here for a massive insight into how the education is faring in Delta State. Our schools are beginning to resume.